Liebe Händelfreundinnen, liebe Händelfreunde, meine sehr geehrten Damen und Herren, ich begrüße Sie herzlich zu einer neuen Ausgabe von unserem Händel Talk. Wir haben für Sie großartige Gäste geladen, Künstlerinnen und Künstler haben uns Beiträge gesendet, damit wir für Sie ein kleines Trostpflaster senden können, hier bei unserem digitalen Festival. Und ich freue mich sehr, dass einer der großen Publikumslieblinge der internationalen Händelfestspiele heute bei mir ist. Herzlich willkommen, William Berger. Good evening. Hello, William. Uh, wo finden wir dich gerade vor? Wo bist du gerade? Where are you at the moment? I am, like most people, at home. Uh, and my home is here in London. Also er ist zu Hause bei sich in London. Und um, wie hast du jetzt die letzten paar Wochen verbracht? How did you pass the last few weeks? Uh, I think the quickest answer to that is um, very slowly, is how I pass the time. Um, but not doing much. Um, a lot of musicians, you know, have been making videos and being very productive. Uh, I'm afraid I've not been one of those. Um, uh, I've kind of used the time to, you know, enjoy life at home. Uh, I've been, I had been on the, on tour since November last year. Uh, I'd gone literally around the world for the first time in my life. And, um, and we, we came home on the 18th of March and uh, from, from South Africa, actually. And shortly after that, lockdown was announced. Um, the most productive thing I've done in the two months is um, I've done all my taxes. Ah. So, yes, that, <laughs> also, and that's the biggest pain and my greatest achievement. So um, <laughs> apart from that, Cooking, reading, spending time at home. Yes. Also seine Steuererklärung hat er fertig. Er hat viel, ge äh, viel gekocht, äh, viel gelesen. Ansonsten hat er es sehr genossen, denn er ist einmal um die ganze Welt gereist äh, seit November äh, und hat es genießt, es jetzt eben sehr auch mal zu Hause zu sein, zur Ruhe zu kommen. Äh, andere Kollegen haben viele Videos aufgenommen. Er war eigentlich ganz glücklich damit, einfach nur zu Hause zu sein. Und ähm, You've been a great star at the Handel Festival in Artmeto, in uh, Imeneo, and with many concerts with uh, Lawrence Cummins, with Nicholas McKeegan. Also, you were here at the Festival with Artmeto, in Imeneo, with many uh, dirigenten. Um, was is your most erinnerlich? Was, an was denkst du, wenn du an Göttingen denkst? What are you thinking about when you think about Göttingen? I, I, yeah, I have to be careful not to cry when you ask me that question. Oh. Um, because it means an awful lot to me. It, it's in fact where I started my career 20 years ago uh, in 2001 with then artistic director Nicholas McGigan. And I was very fortunate enough to be, to continue that relationship with the festival through Lawrence Cummings and yourself. Um, for me, it's always a happy place. It's, it's sort of a combination of, um, it, it feels like summer music camp to me you know the weather always seems to be great even though i know sometimes those thunderstorms come in out of nowhere when you're middle of a dress rehearsal and you come outside and you have an packed coat and it's raining it down but um what i remember is sort of beautiful spring days and lots of bike rides and you know hard work but dedicated and and invested and lovely colleagues always always the best colleagues. I always know that I'll have a great, great time. Er hat gesagt, er muss aufpassen, dass ihm nicht die Tränen kommen, weil er einfach so äh, emotional mit Göttingen verbunden ist. Er hat 2001 dort seine Karriere begonnen, damals noch unter Nicholas McKeegan, äh, war viele, viele Male hier und erinnert sich an viele schöne äh, Radtouren, an äh, viele schöne Freizeitaktivitäten, an fantastische Kolleginnen und Kollegen. Also einige seiner Lieblingskollegen sind äh, dort immer zusammengekommen. Und äh, also er vermisst es sehr und findet es natürlich sehr schade, dass er in diesem Jahr nicht da sein kann. Um, most of um, our audience remembers you, of course, for the big role in Admeto, big in many, <lacht> in many senses, also in vielerlei Hinsicht. Äh, eine große Rolle war eben in Admeto, das erinnert sich viele noch dran. Wir haben es neulich im Kino gesehen, we saw it in the cinema only a few, uh, few weeks ago. Um, was verbindest du mit dieser Arbeit mit Doris Dürre und uh, mit Admeto? What, what do you think about of, of this work with Doris Dürre and Admeto? Um, it's, it's one of, I mean, it's one of the most beautiful things I've ever been a part of. And, and actually, 
in the top five list, one of the other most beautiful things is Imeneo, and I'm, I'm sure we'll talk about that as well. Um, at Meto, you know, again, the memories about all of these things are very personal to me. Uh, and and uh, it, if, you, if you want me to give you great, fantastical answers about mm -hmm. the work and that, those are sort of not always the things I remember. Um, I remember the costume, of course, is very memorable. Um, what I will share with with you and the audience <laughs> is that there was there was very very serious, intense debate um, about whether the the sumo body suit needed to have anatomically correct nipples or not. <laughs> this, this, this was a very important thing, apparently. Ich übersetze mal ganz kurz. <lacht> er hat gerade gesagt, es gab, also Admeto ist wirklich eine der fantastischsten Produktionen, die er je gemacht hat. Leider erinnert er sich mehr nicht mehr an ganz viele Details, aber an ein Detail erinnert er sich. Er war ja an diesem großen äh, Fettkostüm, in diesem äh, äh, Sumo-Ringer-Kostüm. Und er erinnert sich an eine Anprobe, wo wirklich sehr ernsthaft und lange darüber diskutiert wurde, ob dieses äh, Kostüm denn auch äh, Brustwarzen braucht und wie man die da dran näht. Also er sagt, das ist eigentlich eine lustige äh, And of course, the way, the way to determine it was, you know, they made sort of a, pa a pair that was movable and then they, they would move between scenes until, <laughs> until the costume designer decided what was the right place. Um, ist, die waren wieder verwendbar, sie, haben, äh, sie wurden noch nicht fest angenäht, also bei jeder Probe waren die Brustwarzen irgendwo anders, bis der Kostümbildner gesagt hat, so jetzt sitzen sie an der richtigen Stelle. So, um, so yeah, so that, that was interesting. If I look uh, at that a clip of that sometimes, some of the positions that I had to sing in, you know, traditional kind of sumo poses with one leg up in the air, I think I sang the second uh, da capo cadenza all sort of on one leg, which I don't think at my age I, I'd be able to do anymore. Um, I also remember Marie Arnett singing so beautifully in that show and in one of her arias, I had to carry her on my back across the stage and she was heavily pregnant. Mm -hmm. So it, it, not only is it sort of precarious helping somebody else to sing, but I'm also thinking, oh my God, she's pregnant, she's not feeling well tonight. But, but those are sort of the things that, that I at least remember as opposed to how the performance went musically yeah. that night. Also er erzählt, er erinnert sich auch noch sehr gut daran, dass er, ähm, dass er ganz oft auf einem Bein stehen musste, weil das so typische Sumo-Posen waren und er so ein ganzes Da Capo auf einem Bein singen musste, was er sagt, würde er vielleicht heute gar nicht mehr hinkriegen, glaube ich ihm zwar nicht, aber hat er auf jeden Fall gesagt. Und äh, er erinnert sich eben auch noch daran, dass äh, Mary Arnett, die äh, Solistin der äh, Hauptpartie, äh, in dem Moment schwanger war, er musste sie tragen und er war immer so ein bisschen verunsichert. Und äh, das sind so die Situationen, die einem dann eben als, äh, als Sänger durch den Kopf gehen. You already mentioned Imeneo, the other mm. production uh, directed mm. by Sigrid Hof. Du hast eben Imeneo schon erwähnt von Sigrid Hof. Mm. Ein ganz anderer Stil, totally different style, totally different art of choreography. I, I think it's pretty, um, totally different art of, of uh, poses. <laughs> mm. Also eine ganz andere Art der, der Posen. Um, what, what's the essential difference between Art Meter and Imeneo? Was war die grundlegende What? Essenz der Unterschiede? Yeah, what's so interesting about those two examples that I've just realized is that the stark contrast, and yet they're both incredibly stylized, you know, and, and, that, and that was the genius of uh, De Rosterie with, with that concept taking a different style of theater that required the same discipline mm -hmm. as Baroque theater. I think that was kind of, just to wrap that up, I think that was really clever. Um, in Mineo, Uh, I think you've absolutely hit the nail on the head with the word choreography. Mm -hmm. it, it was really lear like learning to dance and sing at the same time. And it was so specific. And I had done Baroque productions previously, two of them, mm -hmm. uh, with Catherine Ferrosi at Göttingen in, in the previous decade. Mm -hmm. So I thought, I know. I know how this goes. It will be fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> with Sigrid, it's another. It's another level, and it's so specific. And and when you get it, it is the most rewarding thing. And I still, I, I don't often uh, listen to productions or look at videos of productions I've done, but I love 
looking at photographs mm -hmm. of that production because and showing them to people because they just look like oil paintings. They look like miniature oil paintings. Um, and sorry, of course, the, the, the last thing is I mean, my, my dream as a child, as a teenager wanting to do opera was, was to do it that way, all lit by candles, mm. you know, in a hall, the size that it would have been mm. in that century. And I mean, it, it was an incredible thrill. I love that. Also er sagt, eigentlich hat er sich als Kind schon gewünscht, in so einer Produktion zu singen wie im Meneo mit historischen Kostümen, mit lauter Kerzen äh, im Hintergrund. Er kann sich daran erinnern, dass es eine sehr durchstilisierte Choreografie war. Also man musste es wirklich wie ein Tanz lernen über sechs Wochen und sie durfte einfach wieder sehr mit dem Meißel jede Bewegung nochmal neu äh, herausgeschlagen hat. Und äh, es ist eben eine, eine Produktion, die auch sehr gerne noch Freunden und Bekannten zeigt, weil sie eben einfach sehr zu Herzen gegangen ist und sehr nah gegangen ist. Um, you had mentioned as a child, uh, your childhood was in South Africa. It's a totally different uh, cultural setting as you. Also, du bist ja in yes. Afrika groß geworden, in einer ganz andere Kultur. Um, wie, was glaubst du, wie würden die, uh, deine Freunde, deine Familie, deine Bekannten in Südafrika auf Imeneo reagieren? What do you think, how would people react in South Africa to a production like uh, I, I think it would blow their minds. Mm. I think it would just, I mean, it certainly did for all the performers on stage. The first time we stepped on that stage and, and, and the heat of the candles, the visceral kind of experience of it. Um, but I, I mean, South Africans, there is no reference for it. I mean, apart from what we read in books, we don't even have the correct buildings, you know, the theaters, South Africa were all built in the in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. They were massive opera houses. Um, so for us, it it would it would look like a version of sort of you know puppet theatre for sort of for something perfect and beautiful. But I don't know what it was that that captured my memory so about this uh, when I started discovering more about opera. Also er sagt, es wäre also erst sicher, dass das Publikum vollkommen begeistert wäre in Südafrika. Es gibt allerdings nicht viele Referenzpunkte. Die Theater in Südafrika selber stammen alle aus den 50er, 60er, 70er Jahren. Es gibt also keine historischen Theater. Es gibt auch in dem Sinne keine historische Aufführungspraxis in der Szene, also mit viel Kerzen. Aber er erinnert sich auch eben vor allem noch an die Hitze auf der Bühne, die von diesen, von diesen ganzen Kerzen ausgegangen ist. Wie bist du denn dann äh, nach Europa gekommen? How did you come to Europe after uh, your childhood in South Africa? Oh, well, as a, as a precursor to that, I was a member of a boys' choir. Uh, not, the mod, not the European model, shall we say. It not uh, connected to a church or a cathedral, uh, but rather like the American boy choir, a, a performance concert choir. Mm -hmm. So I was at boarding school and we would, you know, get up at quarter to six in the morning. At 6 a.m. I was practicing piano. I, there was two hours of music okay. practice, two hours of choir practice every day. Um, and then after two, two months of preparation, we would then go on a tour of a part of the country, because South Africa is quite a large, yeah. large country. Um, so I had that discipline to start with. Also er war in einem Knabenchor, ist äh, dort äh, groß geworden beim Internat, ist jeden Tag um Viertel vor sechs aufgestanden, musste morgens um sechs schon Klavier üben, äh, hat dann jeden Tag äh, zwei Stunden Chorprobe gehabt und dann nach zwei Monaten Vorbereitung gab es immer eine große Konzerttournee durch einen Teil des Landes. Es ist ja ein sehr großes Land, das schafft man gar nicht, äh, das alles äh, so zu bereisen. And how did it go on? Well, it's so, um, I, I, I think the answer to how, how did it go on from there is just, um, a combination of tenacity and the arrogance of youth, maybe. I don't, I don't know. I just, you know, I thought this is what I want to do. Arrogance was also with dabei. But you became a fantastic singer, so there's a talent behind as well. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I just, I knew I needed, I needed a, a way. Uh, I, I actually had two options. The one was to come to the UK. Um, to study singing. Uh, my, my other little secret was uh, at the time, as a, as a teenager in South Africa, I was also um, studying conducting with a conductor over there. Um, so the other offer was um, to work with 
uh, Donald Ronicles in San Francisco when I at the age of 18. Uh, also er konnte and, entweder, hätte entweder gehen können nach London, was er auch dann getan hat, um in London Gesang zu studieren. Er hätte aber auch in San Francisco uh, dirigieren studiert, die studieren and, können bei Donald Run Runnicles. And he decided for London. I did, I, I did not decide. My parents decided. Ah, I, die Eltern haben es entschieden. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, they made the decision. Uh, and, and, you know, it's, it's one of those sliding doors moment. It could have gone either way. I don't regret either way that it's gone, but uh, that's how I ended up in London, studying at Royal yeah, Academy. I mean, as a conductor, you can still start a conducting career in 20 or 30 years, because uh, well, man kann immer noch schlechter dirigieren. <laughs> that, this was the advice that everybody gave me, but, you know, now there are these conductors that are starting very, very, very young. Yeah. Um, but um, but that's, that's how I ended up in, in, uh, in Europe, and then I went to Uh, a summer school in Japan uh, called the uh, Sapporo, uh, the Pacific Music Festival. It's called the Tanglewood of the East, mm -hmm. set up by Leonard Bernstein. And Maestro McGeegan was running the Singers Baroque program. I didn't know about Baroque music. I, I just wanted to go to Japan, really. I was 18. <laughs> Aber im Sommerkurs, äh, der angeboten wurde in Sapporo in Japan und der wollte unbedingt nach Japan. Ihm war eigentlich völlig egal, was die Inhalte waren. Und dort hat er aber dann doch zufällig nicht das Magiegen getroffen. Ja, yeah. and I mean it was, you know, it was a free trip. It, it was it was a month or six weeks in Japan. It was like all experiences in Japan, kind of somewhat surreal and fantastic. And um, a good preparation for later. And, and yeah, and, and uh, yeah, <laughs> true, true. <laughs> although I wasn't that observant, I must say. Um, all been faced, all been planned. For most yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I think it was about a year after that, that a phone call came through uh, from the Göttingen Handel Festschule, and I, I thought it was a joke. I mean, I really didn't think it, I thought somebody was playing a trick on me. But that's, I mean, that's kind of how, The whole story started and how integral Göttingen is to my life and career as a singer. Und er hat ihm erzählt, dass ähm, er einen Anruf bekam ein Jahr nach diesem Sommerkurs äh, von Göttingen und dachte eigentlich, es ist ein Telefonstreich und es ist überhaupt nicht ernst gemeint. Er hat eigentlich nicht ernst genommen, aber das war der Anfang einer langen Geschichte. Um, as you said, you started with Nicholas McGeegan, but you also know Lawrence Cummings. Um, how, how would you describe the two, or where are the differences, where, where is common ground when you think about those two? Wo gibt es Gemeinsamkeiten und Unterschiede zwischen Lawrence Cummings und Nicholas McGeegan? Um, let, let's start with common ground, because I haven't really thought about differences. Uh, I think the quality that both those people possess, that I value the most, um, as, a, as a singer and as a performer, but as a working musician is the joy of the music. And, you know, you and I both know that those schedules at the, at the festival, you know, if you're in more than one thing, mm. you're doing the opening night the night before, and then there's a great party afterwards. And then sometimes there's a 10 a.m. rehearsal the next morning for an oratorio that no one's yet looked at, that's being performed three days later, and everybody's tired and, you know, wanted an extra hour in bed. And both those people can lift a room, like just grab your attention and make you realize why it is that you're there, hmm. that you, you, you absolutely love it. I, I've had this experience time and time again, where I sit there in the morning sort of going, oh God, I don't, know. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't think I know. It. And then, you know, the downbeat goes and the orchestra starts playing and that fantastic orchestra. And, and then, you know, it's all go and it's a joy. It's a real, it's, it's, it's never difficult working with either of those people. Um, to the Gemeinsamkeiten, just let me translate quickly. Mm. 
ähm, zu den Gemeinsamkeiten, also er hat gesagt, ist, was beide gemeinsam haben, ist diese große Freude am Arbeiten. Beide schaffen es wirklich, äh, die Menschen zu inspirieren. Und wenn es nach einer durchzechten Nacht ist, nach einer Premierenparty, bei einer 10 Uhr Frühprobe, wo sich alle äh, überlegen, warum tun sich das eigentlich an, diese intensiven Probenpläne bei den Festspielen, wo es wirklich kaum Pause gibt, und dann schaffen es beide eben, die Inspiration so zu übertragen, dass alle mit dabei sind und alle in der Musik sind. Ja, yeah. so, I'm trying to, as you were talking, I'm trying to think of differences. For me, it's, it's hard to see them, because for me, you know, I, I've been employed by both. I still work with both conductors. Um, so the way that I sing is obviously something they both like. They both singer oriented conductors uh they're singers who have like the music to be led by the vocal line or the articulation in the orchestra to be led by the vocal text um and neither of them approach baroque music as as a museum piece you know as something that sits in a little glass box mm -hmm. and it should just be so so and just perfect and It, it needs to be alive and it needs to be saying something. And what it said 300 years ago is still just as valid as what it's saying now. This sort of, those are the things that I think of when I think about those two people. And I love them both. I love them both. Er sagt, er liebt sie einfach beide. Beide sind ausgesprochene Sängerdirigenten, die sich wirklich sehr auf ihre Interpreten einlassen, auf ihre Sänger einlassen. Und beide sind Menschen, die nie museal werden in dem, was sie tun, sondern immer die direkte und die direkte Ansprache des Publikums von heute in den Blick haben. Um, so talk a little bit more about different styles of different genres. You've done opera, you've done lead a lot. Uh, du hast Oper gemacht, du hast Lied gemacht. Um, how about musical? Did you ever do musical? <laughs> um, no, I, in, the, in, <laughs> in South Africa. Before I left, I did. Um, also in South I, Africa hat er schon auch mal musical gemacht. Yeah, I did. I forgot about it, actually. That's how long it's been. Um, I did The Wiz, which was the modern retake of The Wizard of Oz. Ah, okay. That's how from Oz in a modern uh, yeah. adaptation. So it was a rock musical. I had a wig like Mick Jagger and like Gold Ah, also a perücke wie Mick Jagger and electric mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> So, I mean, truly, like Norma Desmond, I can play every part. Um, I'm... No, um, no, I've uh, I've not I've not done musicals, but in in terms of of opera, it will probably surprise a lot of the Göttingen audience who know me as a baroque singer. Uh, like the opera I just finished before lockdown started uh, was a new production created around uh, my character, um, it, which was La Bohème. Mm -hmm. So actually, I and I've now done Marcello three, four times, this is a role that keeps coming back. And that's something that seems to surprise a lot of people who say, how can you be a Baroque singer? You know, we always thought that this is what you were. But the approach in terms of the style, the lyricism is different, but the way I use my voice is the same. Also er sagt, im Moment singt er sehr viel La Bohème. Das überrascht immer viele Leute, weil sie denken, du bist auch ein Barocksänger, wie kann, passt denn da Puccini rein? Aber er sagt, es ist einfach dieselbe Technik. Die Phrasierung ist ein bisschen anders, aber ansonsten ist es natürlich seine Stimme, mit der er das singt. And how about the differences between lead and opera? Do you sing lead differently than opera? Singst du lead anders als opera? Yes, definitely. Definitely. I mean, Puccini is more expansive, let's say, mm -hmm. than Baroque. And then lead, I mean, a lead is, first of all, just, it's terrifying. It's terrifying. Es because it's ein so, Lust, ein Lied zu singen. It's so... It's so small, you know, uh, to me, at least. So, some people uh, are really excel at this and, 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 and hunger for it. Um, for me, the, the assurance of if I'm doing an opera, all the people that are around me on stage, all the people that are backstage, everybody that helped that project come together, the orchestra, the management, like, I love that feeling. Um, I, the last time I did uh, a, a leader recital tour was actually in Germany with Julius Drake. Uh, and we did, um, you know, uh, Beethoven's Albon and uh, we did the Leichhalle in Leipzig and the Gasteig in München and so weiter. But it, um, 
it's just sort of the two of you and it's the two of you that has to create that magic all on your own and it's terrifying and when it pays off it's great i mean don't don't get me wrong but um, it, it scares me. It does. I do it and also it's still... Ein bisschen, er hat ein bisschen Angst vor Lied, weil er sagt, er liebt diesen gesamten Budenzauber bei der Oper. Man hat ein riesen Opernchor, ein Opernorchester, man hat irgendwie Regieassistenten, alle möglichen sonstigen äh, Beleuchter, Tontechniker und was, was ich, wer da nicht alles so flöre, äh, die da durchs Bild laufen und das brummt und äh, man ist eben mittendrin und er sagt, das Lied flößt ihm doch Angst an, weil man so alleine ist. Man ist so allein verantwortlich. Das ist sehr erfüllend, wenn das gut geht, aber es ist eben erstmal eine, eine viel, viel größere Verantwortung. Äh, wir sprechen dann mal über ähm, Sprachen überhaupt, talking about languages. Äh, mhm. Du singst ja viel natürlich in Italienisch, äh, sicher auch in Englisch, äh, auch auf Deutsch äh, bestimmt, wenn wir über Lied sprechen, wir singen in English, German. Um, what does language change for you? Was verändert die Sprache für dich in der Musik? Uh, in terms of how it's sung? Anything? The sound, um, style, whatever? Yeah. Yeah, I think um, the better you can understand the, the spoken cadence of a language, uh, the, the, the better you can sing it. Uh, I think this is probably actually quite a common bit of knowledge. Um, I heard a story, uh, this is me slightly misdirecting your question on purpose. <laughs> uh, I heard a story that Barbara Bonney, who could memorize entire recitals on a on a flight somewhere this i know to be true um uh, but she would only sing in languages that she spoke which is why and you remember she was married to Hawkan Hardegard, so she spoke swedish and she spoke german from working in europe and so that's kind of she only sang in those languages because they went in kind of really really quickly um for me I always like discovering slightly different things. Um, so I sing a lot of Spanish song repertoire, which is generally not so popular uh, by male singers outside of Spain. Uh, you know, if you think about the famous recordings of, of any of the series, it's, it's all the great Spanish divas that always come to mind. Um, and then I like challenges like singing Dvorak, just so that I have an excuse to learn Czech. Another Czech, maybe. <laughs> yeah, so Czech, Czech turned out to be not so hard, and that was quite fun. Uh, Russian is really difficult, I found. Um, and my next kind of lingual musical challenge is, uh, and this has been brewing for a few years, uh, is I would like to Uh, sing some of the Edvard Grieg songs mm -hmm. in the original Norwegian, even though I know that he approved of the German settings and that's how I've been singing them for years. I think that's one I'd quite like to try. Also er sagt, es ist eher lieb, die Herausforderung tatsächlich auch neue Sprachen zu lernen, neues Repertoire zu entdecken, vor allem spanische Lieder hat er gerade äh, arbeitet. Ich möchte jetzt Grieg gerne auch in der Originalsprache singen. Er kennt allerdings auch andere Sänger wie Barbara Bonny zum Beispiel, die nur wirklich äh, in den Sprachen singen, die sie auch fließend sprechen. Und äh, er sagt, es ist natürlich wichtig, den Inhalt zu kennen, aber es ist trotzdem schön, Herausforderungen zu haben mit Russisch, mit Tschechisch äh, und, äh, und äh, solchen Sprachen. What's the challenge to sing Handel then? Was ist die Herausforderung bei Handel? Oh, I don't know. I've been doing it so long. I can't I can't analyze it anymore. What's the rewarding thing? What is this the, re the rewarding thing is handle is um, handle is like the touchstone for me. You know, handle is coming home every time. Um, uh, really, it's 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 hard when 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 you or a journalist asks me what is it about handle because it's so ingrained in me how to do it. It's so the basis on which it, everything I, I build um, for my singing, you know, if I'm having a, a day where I'm warming up even for Puccini and it's not feeling quite in the right place, then I'll sing a Handel aria, something that I know that's really in my body. Um, for, for me, when, I, when I'm able to analyze it, it's actually uh, when I give masterclasses to young singers and it is my primary advice. You know, a lot of young singers now want to, the route is win a big competition, 
and launch into a career. And uh, that means you spend four years learning to sing four arias that are competition winners and you haven't learned anything else. Um, and I'm doing, I'm doing a lot of kind of coaching in South Africa and, and, and going back to my home country to say, there is a different way of building a career. This is how I did it. Um, start, you know, start with Handel, start with Mozart. It's kind of like vocal balm. It just, it's, it's safe, it's rewarding. And it's then when I'm doing masterclasses that I, those little moments kind of quickly pop into my mind. And then it, when you put me on the spot like this, I dry up, I'm afraid. But, um, but Handel, what are, what are the challenges? The same as anything. I mean, it's not music that is um, at all just because it's older, inferior. I mean, Handel had a better understanding of um, theatrical plot devices and how to surprise and emotionally wrench an audience, you know, out of a moment um, than, than anybody who's writing a musical today almost. You know, he's, he really understands theater very well, I think. Also, William sagt, dass uh, die Herausforderung ist, dass es einfach anspruchsvolle Musik ist. Also Handel kannte äh, die dramatischen Momente im Stück, er hat sie gut vertont, hatte das gut im Griff und man muss es einfach ernst nehmen. Es ist nicht veraltete Musik, sondern es war schon damals sehr herausfordernd. Und äh, was eben, äh, was äh, er immer zurückkriegt aus der Musik, er sagt, dass äh, Händel auch sein, ein, fast wie eine Heimkehr ist. Also es ist, er hat es so oft gemacht, es ist so in seinem Körper drin, dass es für ihn immer eine Rückkehr ist zu Händel. Und er empfiehlt auch jungen Menschen, äh, wenn am Beginn ihrer Karriere, wenn er unterrichtet, dass sie sich auf Händel konzentrieren, auf Mozart. Also man muss nicht immer diese vier äh, Star-Arien singen, die man jetzt äh, auf äh, Wettbewerben singt, sondern es gibt auch eine andere Art Karriere zu machen, die vielleicht dann eben auch gesünder ist für den Körper, für die Stimme. Um, and um, is there any, any, you say it's a touchstone, Handel, the Handel repertoire is the touchstone, but is there any piece of music you th you're always coming back to? Is that Handel or is that some, some other bit of music? Is there one aria you sing to warm up every day or if you're celebrating some events for you? I don't know, is there some emotional bit? No, of no, no, I'm not that kind of, there isn't, there isn't ever, I, I, um, I get bored very easily. So <laughs> <laughs> for me, it's more about, What's the next thing? What's the next thing? And surprisingly, uh, again, I'm twisting your question. I apologize. Um, it's about the handle walls I haven't sung hmm. that I still like. Uh, I will gar nicht so eine Rolle, wo immer hin zurückkehrt, sondern er möchte immer das Neue haben, möchte neue Herausforderungen und freut sich eher auf die Handelpartien, die er noch nicht gesungen hat. So, which would be your next uh, favorite uh, uh, part to well, so the top of the list, the top of the handle list has to be Saul. Ah, I mean, it has Saul to be Saul. Also, irgendwann möchte er nochmal gerne Saul singen, auf jeden Fall. Yeah. Um, and actually, uh, Rodelinda has always been on that list. Mm. Uh, uh, the other is um, Ronaldo, which I've done the arias in concert yeah. for Gala and Göttingen many times. Uh, but I've never done the complete opera. Uh, I've also never done a complete Cesare. Ah. So I've, uh, I had an opportunity a few years ago, uh, the details of which I am uh, <laughs> not legally not allowed to discuss. Yeah. Also er würde wahnsinnig gerne mal einen kompletten Julius Caesar machen, er hat bisher nur Ausschnitte gesungen, er hätte die Chance gehabt, wir schweigen jetzt über den, den Kontext, äh, Rinaldo hätte, er, würde er gerne nochmal singen, er hat, ja. und Linda freut er sich sehr drauf, hat er noch nie in einer szenischen Aufführung gesungen und äh, also insofern eben eher die eher den, äh, neuen Rollen, äh, die da sind. Ich, um, I'm just going to tell the audience what, what's, what's on tomorrow because we're approaching the end of this talk. Also morgen, meine sehr geehrten Damen und Herren, liebe Händelfreunde, liebe Händelfreunde, gibt es Musik von Anna Dennis. Anna Dennis hat äh, nämlich Susarme, hätte Susarme hier in einem Jazz-Arrangement äh, präsentiert. Sie hat uns ein Video geschickt zu diesem wunderbaren Stück. Dann gibt es ein Händel-Special, ein Festival-Special mit äh, dem Vorsitzenden der Göttinger Händelgesellschaft, Herrn Prof. Dr. Wolfgang Sandberger. Er wird eine Online-Vorlesung halten unter dem Titel Händel und wir der Festvortrag hier beim Digitalen Festival und abends gibt es dann noch einen Händel-Talk mit Georges Petrou. Er ist der zukünftige Leiter der internationalen Händelfestspiele Göttingen.
von 2022 an. Jetzt haben wir ganz viel über Kostüme gesprochen. We talked about costumes, we talked about singing, we, uh, we haven't talked about make-up. Wir haben noch nicht über Make-up gesprochen. <lacht> Du hast gesagt, you said the fat suit, the fat suit was the weirdest uh, or one of the mem most memorable costumes you had. Uh, was war denn das, das denkwürdigste, die denkwürdigste Maske, das denkwürdigste Make-up? What was the most memorable Make-up you ever had? Uh, Emineo. Emineo, ah, okay. Because it took uh, an hour and a half to apply that Make-up. And that's also in der Maske. Yeah, and, and, and because of the candlelight, you needed, uh, it, it, it was, it, If any of your audience, if, if there's any crossover in a handle audience that also watches RuPaul's Drag Race, I, I don't know what that diagram would look like, but um, it, it's kind of like that. There's a lot of contouring that goes on beforehand, and then they slap a lot of white on it. But um, it, it literally took uh, 90 minutes for each singer in the makeup chair to get so that you had enough expression to convey just by candlelight. Um, that was, yeah, that was the most intense. Um, no, I've also done a... At the Wizard of Oz in South Africa. <laughs> well, and I've also, I've also been bald with a comb over as uh, Don Alfonso at the Liceo in Boston. Er hatte auch schon mal eine Glatze als Don Alfonso. Allerdings bei Emineo war es eben noch extremer, weil er wirklich 90 Minuten in der Maske saß, weil gerade für dieses Kerzen nicht es wichtig ist, so eine ganz weiße Grundierung zu haben. Und das hat einfach wahnsinnig lange gedauert. Und das ist ihm aber auch noch eine gute Erinnerung. Thank you very much, William. We had a lovely half hour. We're very, very much looking forward to seeing you in Göttingen in 2021. Wir freuen uns sehr auf das 100, ja, 101 der Handel Centenary we're going to celebrate. Wir freuen uns sehr, dass du dann bei uns bist. Auf Rode Linda, auf viele weitere Abende. Um, thank you very much for being with us and uh, all the best. Thank you. Thank you for the visit. Take care. Bye-bye.